today my top five tips for working with Arduinos. Hey, what's happening guys? Today I'm gonna give you my top five, five tips for working with Arduino. The first one is use the right Arduino for the job. So here you see an Uno. This is probably the most common of all the Arduinos. It's useful for just about any job. It is basically and electrically compatible with the Nano, which is much smaller and easier to fit into your projects. This is, you know, quite small. Let me find a ruler here. The Nano is what, 40 millimeters? I did, I did that wrong again. I keep forgetting to... Okay, this is what happens in old age. Your brain fails. That's about 43 millimeters by what 18 millimeters as opposed to an uno which when you count in the uh, usb port is 71 millimeters by like 53 millimeters so much smaller but basically identical and then if you need more inputs or outputs you can move up to the mega uses the same Arduino IDE to develop but it gives you more inputs and outputs tip number four get yourself some way to mount your Arduino and a breadboard if you just do a search for Arduino trays you'll come up with all sorts of things like this is the cheapest one. This is just a plain clear Lexan panel. It's got some holes drilled in it to mount your Arduino. Use some double-sided foam tape. Mount a breadboard. You're good to go. If you have a 3D printer, this is one that I 3D printed. You can simply take your Arduino. Snap it in there like that. And the same with a breadboard. Although this breadboard won't fit because it has different types of uh, end pins but you get the idea and then here is a nicer commercial model that will also take a Raspberry Pi and Arduino see this one will even take up to the Mega you can put that in here as well just so you don't have wires running everywhere Tip number three, take it easy on your Arduino when it comes to driving different sensors, LEDs, or what have you. Each pin from the Arduino, each output pin, can source up to 40 milliamps, but you have a total overhead of 200 milliamps total, so you have to add up everything. Now, here is a simple red LED and it is running on a 1K current limiting resistor. And it's plenty bright. But if you're just getting started in electronics, what you might find is they're telling you that you want to use a 220 or a 270 milliamp resistor. And it is much brighter. Let me show you. I'm gonna move this over here and just put in a couple of wires so that we can put an ammeter in series with this LED and you can see the current. Let me turn off these overheads so you can see the meter better. We'll put it in milliamp mode. Now this is with the 220 ohm resistor. Oh, it's microamps. You can see we're getting about 12 milliamps out of that. Okay. I'm going to pull out the 220, put the 1K back in. Okay. 
Oh, if I can make my fingers work. There we go. And now you can see the LED is hardly any difference to the eye brighter, but we're barely pulling three milliamps. So take it easy on your Arduino. And that leads us to the next tip. Tip number two. If you have to use something that draws more than, let's say, 30 milliamps, just to keep it under that limit. Like, for instance, this 1 watt high power LED, which will take up to 350 milliamps, use a transistor. Use an NPN transistor to make it easy on yourself. This is a 2N2222. And we can use this 5 volt out pin, which I have brought over here to this rail because the voltage regulator on that pin will source up to about 400 milliamps you don't want to go any much above that but that will be enough to drive our led and then what we can do is we can just use the arduino itself to signal the transistor to turn on and or off so in this case of the 2n2222 Pins from left to right are emitter, base, and collector. So how we want to do this, I'm just going to stick it in here. In some random holes. Actually, let me go over here and do it this way. So it makes more sense to you. So the collector is what we want to get our power from. So we run the collector up to our five volt rail, which we're taking from that five volt out on the Arduino. The emitter, we want to run over to the anode of our LED. Pardon my hands getting in the way here. <laughs> kind of hard for me to see what I'm doing. The camera does get in the way. So the emitter goes there like that. So the power flows in through the collector. And once the base opens up a channel, it will flow out through the emitter and into there so all we need then is to take our signal pin and put it to the base we're going to use a current limiting resistor and then we can kind of bypass that 40 milliamp limit So now our Arduino is driving that extremely bright LED, but the transistor is taking all the power. So the actual chip here, the uh, Atmega was it uh, 328P, has absolutely nothing to do with the power being drawn by the LED. It is simply sending out a low power signal to the base pin of that transistor saying turn on turn off turn on turn off and it is pulling the power off the rail which is coming from there being powered by the USB which is capable of putting out up to was it 500 milliamps so that way you can save your Arduino and draw more power And this is my number one tip. Let's start out by talking about sensors, displays, and all that. It doesn't matter what they are. You know, here's an old uh, Nokia type display that uses SPI. Here is an OLED that uses I squared C. Um, there's a rotary encoder. This is a capacitive touch switch. This is a uh, radar frequency motion detector, current sensor. It doesn't matter what. And here's the key. 
you need a library to use all these unless you want to write your own library which is just fine but that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about here no matter where you get your sensors from I can almost guarantee you that Lady Ada has written a driver that will work with it. I use Adafruit drivers almost exclusively in all my Arduino projects because number one, she writes good code, and number two, and this is the key, she documents it so well. So for instance, um, the .961 28 by what is it 64 I squared C OLED pin uses the I forget the name of the driver 1328 or something like that but if you just search I mean you can buy one of these displays from the usual suspects off of eBay for a buck or two but go to Adafruit site Look for their uh, I squared C OLED display. Download the the uh, library. I can almost guarantee you it's going to work. It's going to work the first time. It's going to work every time. And her documentation will make it easy for you to use it. You will have to change the I squared C address. It's no big deal. So those are my top five Arduino tips. I hope you like them. I hope this helped. If it did, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, comment, share, and even check out the Patreon page. Maybe become a patron. Buck a month. Goes a long way to helping me make these videos. All right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.